Hey, what's going on there guys? You officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna talk about the famous hay smell that so many guys have been complaining about. But first show us some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. Link will be in the description below. And also don't forget, if you wanna come and sesh with us, check out our grows and just chill with us. Follow us on Instagram. Link to that will also be in a description below. I've been getting a lot of questions on why everybody's plants are smelling like hay. I mean, well, not everyone, but a decent amount of you guys have been asking about it, so let's talk about this hay smell. Now, the smell from your flowers have a lot to do with the quality of the flowers that you've grown. I mean, that makes sense though, right? It's kind of like when we judge our food based on how good or bad it smells. And I'm not gonna say if you don't have much of a smell, it's bad flower, but having that nice, super strong, dank smell just, you know, it just makes the experience that much better. And there's so many different smells and terp flavors out there. I mean, you you got earthy, you got fruity, citrusy, gassy, chocolatey, and then there's hay. Sound kind of depressing, didn't it? Now, before I forget, I do want to remind you guys that we do have two giveaways coming in November. We got one coming on November 1st and November 15th, right before Thanksgiving. We're giving away over $1,000 worth of ILGM beans across to 10, like 10 to 13 winners. It depends. I gotta, I gotta email, see what I can get going. So definitely join us on Patreon. If if you do want in. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to the old hay smell. I really do make it sound pretty bad, right? Now let's talk about some reasons why you might be getting that hay smell. Either you made some mistakes that causes the smell that you're getting, you know, it could be the genetics, or maybe, you know what, you just didn't do anything. I've had some flowers that had that hay smell, and after a week or two of curing, that smell just changed and it just it just smelled really good, it didn't smell like hay anymore. So there's a lot of different variables on why you're getting that hay smell. If you haven't messed anything up, you know, you had great environmental conditions, and they just looked happy and healthy throughout your entire grow, you know what? It could be the strain or the genetics of a specific strain that you're growing. If your flowers haven't been drying evenly, or even if they dried like too quick, that could contribute to the hay smell that you're getting. You don't want the outsides of your flowers to be dry while the insides are still gonna be wet. Also, if your fans are hitting one side of your flowers, the rest of your flowers aren't gonna be getting dry. They're not gonna get that, they're not gonna get dried evenly all across the board. So that's pretty much what I mean. Maybe you're drying too many flowers way too close together. I mean, that's legit a thing too. That's something that a lot of people tend to overlook as well. Also, there's a reason why I always say to you guys to dry in cooler temps. I know I mention it a lot in videos where I am talking about drying. Now, if your flowers are being exposed to stagnant air, that's it's just air not moving around and if it is kind of warm that can also be a contributing factor and sometimes you can actually get mold to just you know start growing like as you're drying if you got some moisture you don't have any air moving and it's warm I mean those are like the absolute best conditions for mold so just be careful with your temps if you can help it and you might get a hard smoke as well and I just don't think you want that you want a nice long dry what what uh, okay, thank you for my weekly summary there, Apple. <sighs> the watch always messes me up somehow. I'm just used to it by now. So as I was saying, you want a nice long dry. You know what, I used to dry at 35%. There were some older videos where I did mention, you know, drying at 35% as, you know, like that, like don't go any further than 35%. And you know what, it was still pretty good smoke. It was pretty decent, you know, it dried in five to six days, but then I started drying like 55%, 60% tops. You know, that was the relative humidity. I started that with the blue cheese and the GDPs and I dried that for about 12 days and it, I mean, oh my God, it was like, <laughs> it was like night and day, okay? So yes, you want a longer dry than a shorter one if you can aim for that. Aim for about eight to 14 days of a dry time. And of course, this video is for people that are having issues with that hay smell. If anyone's having great luck with drying, just keep doing what you're doing. Next, believe it or not, I'm gonna catch some heat for it, but you know what? I don't care because I just don't. Wet trimming, pretty much trimming before they're dry and you know, I, I just don't really care what anyone says. Dry trimming for the freaking win. I love dry trimming. I hate wet trimming. There's no secret to this. I've, 
I've complained about this on live streams. I've complained about this in like other past videos, okay? As far as the potency, this one is a heated debate. You know, some people are gonna say that you lose potency in a wet trim. I personally haven't experienced a loss of potency to where I can notice it enough to tell you guys, hey, wet trimming will make you lose potency. But flavor, I'll, I'll definitely argue that all the way. Dry trimming will give you a better overall flavor. It just is what it is. But anyway, if you're trying to dry your flowers in a cool place, flowers that are kind of stuck in the leaves might stay wet during the drying process. So if you want, trim a little bit before you hang your plants. Like the fan leaves, you know, the bigger leaves that are gonna just be kind of clinging onto your flowers. You don't have to dry it all, but it's gonna save you a lot of aggravation if you get rid of some of the fan leaves ahead of time. Because if you don't, they're all gonna cling up there and then it's just kind of annoying picking all the fan leaves apart and you know it's just it's just gonna be kind of a waste of time so just try to do that ahead of time some strains just naturally produce really leafy flowers and they'll always kind of feel soaked during the drying process so that's why I say I try to get rid of some of the leaves just a few snips and just you know hang them up but if you're drying in warmer temps which I recommend trying to avoid but if you can't Listen up. Trimming off leaves before drying can cause the outside to dry a little too quickly and you don't want that. If you want to dry successfully, this is what I'm going to recommend right now. Right here, right now, I'm going to tell you. Keep the temps in the 60s, maybe the low 70s, maybe, you know, like 73 or something. Keep the relative humidity around 50 to 60%. That's optimal right there, okay? Don't go higher than 60%. Me personally, I don't like to go higher than 60%. That's a little sketch to me. You know, if you guys do and it works out, then great. But, you know, this is all for like newer growers out there. And try not to go lower than 40%. 35%, I said in past videos, are okay. But you know what? If you want more flavor, then definitely a longer dry is just it's just always going to be it's just always going to be better and make sure that you have a fan moving and if you're in a tent point the fan away from your flowers make your fans hit the walls of your tent and the air is going to circulate better and way more evenly that way i don't it really annoys me like when people just have the fans blowing straight, straight into the flowers. I'm not even talking about after harvest and you're drying. I'm talking about fans hitting your actual plants and it, you know, it looks like, it looks like your plants are going through a wind tunnel. So try to avoid that. I've always had the fans like in the tent just blow, you know, just hit the walls. And that way it's just, it's going to circulate a little bit better. It's not going to be like in your face on your plants. I might be a little biased with the next thing that I'm going to say, but in my opinion, the best fans for tents are monkey fans. I don't know if you heard of them. Go to your local hydro shop, ask if they have any monkey fans, and I grabbed a few of them at my local hydro shop. They're really good because unlike the clip-on fans, you know, you clip them on, they just, they somehow keep slipping and slipping and slipping, and the next thing you know, they're like all the way on the floor already. I don't like that, okay? So the monkey fans are the bomb. They're kind of like vines attached to the pole. Like they almost go like in a vine shape. So that way it's a lot harder for them to fall. And if anything, you could just, you could always put some Velcro on your pole and they're never gonna move. That's the best way I can describe it. So hopefully you shouldn't have any more issues with that hay smell if you follow my recommendations. And of course, like I said before, if you do still have that hay smell, then you know what? You just gotta go through the motions. You just gotta cure, you know, cure one week, two weeks, and then the smell's gonna slowly go away. And if not, I don't know what to tell you, honestly. You know, I only had that hay smell just once, and it just, it went away after the cure, and I never had any more issues with that. So hopefully, hopefully you guys don't have any issues with that. Now, another thing that I do wanna talk about and mention is your health and safety. Always break up a few nugs and check for mold. Inspect your flowers. If you find mold, throw it away. Don't try to cut around it. I know some people were asking, oh, should I cut around that little bit of mold? No, just throw it out, get rid of it. Your health is not worth risking, so always make sure to protect yourself and keep yourself safe. The thing that sucks about getting good at growing is that you naturally grow bigger and bigger colas, which, it's like a double-edged sword, you know what I'm saying? You get the bigger colas, you know, you get more weight, but at the same time, it's easier to get bud rot on those bigger colas, so just be wary of that. I think it was the Gorilla Glue autos that I was growing, and the colas were massive, they were massive, but I didn't think we, I don't think the fans were circulating as much as good as they, they could have, and I mean, it was summer, it was actually last summer. We had to throw half of it away because it ended up getting mold, so just make sure your air is always moving. 
try your best to keep the temperatures kind of cool, you know what I'm saying, especially during the flowering stage. I just don't want you guys to waste all your time and, and then throw half of it out, you know. That's what happened to me, I don't want it to happen to you guys. And back to the bud rot thing, it also has a lot to do with the strains that you're running, you know, when you get, get, get the bud rot. Try to look for strains. Do your homework ahead of time before growing. You know, you gotta do your pre-planning. Look for strains that are more resistant to mold. You know, a lot of the indica strains are, are really resistant. So definitely make sure you do your research on that. You know, there's a lot of resources. There's the internet, you know. You got, you got Leafly, you know, you got a lot of these different apps. You got you get apps on your phone now that you could look for, you know, like every every strain specific stuff you wanna get information on it. So definitely do your research on that. If you know that you're not gonna have the best drying or flowering conditions, like I said, pick the strains that are more resistant to bud rot. So just make sure you got good airflow. I mean, it's super important. I always stress that out enough. And lastly, like I said earlier, and I'm gonna say it again, stay away from heat. Heat will cause you to get poor smelling flowers and could contribute to the hay smells as well. I, I didn't really mention that before, but I'm talking like 82 to 85 degrees. Stay away from that range. Cooler is always going to be better. Now, we're talking about drying. We're not talking about while we're actually flowering. So, I, you know, I don't want to get anybody all confused on that. So when you're drying, stay away from like 82, 85, any higher. I mean, you know, no good. Stay in the 60s, maybe the low 70s, and you should be perfectly fine. All right, guys, so that's pretty much everything I gotta say about the hay smell. There's not really too much here to talk about, but hopefully it helps some of you guys out that had questions about the hay smell. We are gonna be transplanting the mandarin cookies and purple frost giant, so be sure to stay updated on Instagram. Follow us on there. I put a lot of updates on there. We are gonna be doing that super soil mix, you know, when we're gonna be transplanting. I'm definitely gonna show you my recipe. I know you guys are gonna love it, so be sure to watch out for that video because it's gonna drop very soon okay so before I close off today's video I want to thank everyone on screen for supporting us on patreon I really appreciate the love and support you guys have shown since February since February it's, it's crazy we've we've been on patreon that long and we got over a hundred members and that giveaway man we got two two giveaways this month coming and it, it's gonna be really awesome I'm glad that I'm able to give you guys a lot of my stuff a lot of stuff you know, in the giveaway, so like, you know, I like to give back to the community as well. All right, so I'm gonna close off today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content. I'll catch you guys in the next one, and as always, stay safe, peace.